Hello everyone. Today's topic is how to localize the impacted canine, right? The buccolingual position of the impacted canine. Because this is a commonly asked question in MR, both in Part A and Part B, and even any other exam. So in this presentation, I will show you how to localize impacted canine both on a vertical shift tool, horizontal shift tool, and on a CBCT, right? Especially in cross cuts, because otherwise in the CBCT you can easily localize the canines. So uh, first of all, the horizontal and the vertical shift rule in the plane radiography. So in plane radiography, uh, we use the clock principle and use the slope rule, same lingual, opposite buckle, uh, to localize the impacted canine, uh, its buccal lingual position. So first of all, the vertical shift rule. It's a vertical shift, like what I'm showing you two x-rays. One is the OPG or the DPT or the orthopentamogram. And the upper is the standard maxillary occlusal, SMO, or the upper occlusal. So the OPG is usually taken at 8 to 10 degree, and the upper occlusal is taken at 7 to 75 degree. So as a cone moves from 8 to 10 degree and up towards 7 to 75 degree, so that's why it's called a vertical shift rule, right? Because the cone is shifting in the vertical direction. So to localize canines uh, in the uh, vertical shift rule, you have to standardize the canines according to a vertical position, like what you have to see a vertical position. So first of all, I will take my X-ray, which is my first X-ray, which is OPG. And number one, I will see the tip of the canine. So my tip of the canine is somewhat at this level. I trace a red line for you. So either you have to see the distance of this canine from the root apex or the, like what, um, the central incisor, which it is close, or you have to see it from the cemento enamel junction or the neighboring teeth or the uh, alveolar ridge, right? So in this case, if I see the tip of the canine, might be the tip of the canine might be striking below this, right, at this level. So if I see this, it is somewhere in the uh, apical two third of the, uh, like, but if I divide the roots of the central incisor into three halves, it's in the middle third. But when I go for a vertical shift tool, the cone moves upward. And if I see the position of my canine, the left canine, um, this is the tip of the canine. And this is the tip of the lateral inc a central incisor or the right central incisor because I'm localizing the right canine. So it's somewhere in the apical one third of the uh, uh, like what incisor, right? The, uh, the canine tip is somewhere in the apical one third of the central incisor. So as a cone direction move upward, right, because it's a uh, standard maxillary occlusal, so does the, uh, like what the, uh, the canine position moved upward. So the canine is parental place because we apply the slope rule that is same lingual. So that it's on the lingual or the parental side. Now moving to the horizontal shift rule. In horizontal shift rule, uh, like what in vertical shift rule, we were looking for the, some vertical landmarks, but in horizontal, we go for the horizontal landmarks. So we have two X-rays uh, taken at different angulation. So first of all, I have to decide that which in which X-ray, like what was more mesial and which X-ray was most distant. So if I go on the landmarks in the first X-ray on my left side, I can see a complete lateral incisor, right? And I can see only like what uh, the mesial one third of the crown of the six. But in the other x-ray, I can see the roots of the canine, oh, sorry, the uh, molar. Uh, this x-ray is on my right side, a complete root of the molar. And uh, like what I do not see the uh, most part of the my uh, incisor, right? Uh, so some part of the incisor is cut, like what I do not see the mesial half of this incisor. So it's partially shown here, even the roots is like what partially shown here. So my first x-ray in which I see the complete incisor is more mesial and the second x-ray is more distal. So this one I will say it mesial and this one I say distal. So I can move from distal to mesial direction 
or I can move from mesial to distal traction. So suppose I move from the distal to the mesial traction, the arrow traction would be somewhat this way, right? So I see my canine, the tip of my canine, like what I'm tracing on the tip of canine. And then I can see a pulp chamber nearby, right? That is a stable structure nearby. So there's a distance of like what, three millimeter, four millimeter from the pulp chamber. Now, if I move from distal to mesial, right? And there I see that the tip of the canine almost landing on the pulp chamber of the central incisor, right? So even some part of the canine covering the pulp chamber, which was not evident in the distal X-ray. So as my beam moved from distal to mesial, my canine also moved from distal to mesial, right? So I will apply the same rule that is called the slop rule. And in slop rule, it move in the same direction, same palatal or lingual, and the opposite is buccal. So both this, like what this in this case too, the canine is buccal place. Even if I move to the opposite direction, like from mesial to distal, right? So even if I move in the opposite direction, like what this is mesial and this is distal. And I move from like what this way. So again, like what the tip of the canine is, uh, um, almost touching the pulp chamber. And if I move distal, the tip of the canine move also distal, right? So the canine is palatal positioned. Now comes the CBCTs. In CBCTs, what happening in the exams, they're showing us cross cuts, right? And uh, uh, like what in the conventional CBCT, I can like what scroll it and I can see it where my canine is. Even I can go for the 3D developed view. And I can see that where my tooth is placed. Like when this tooth, they are multiple is two. So what happening in the exam part, they are showing like what uh, you cross cards and asking you where's the root resorption, right? And in which position, uh, like what is placed. But mostly they asked about the root resorption when it comes to CBCT. That's a difficult part because people can locate the canines in the CBCT very easily. But the, it's root resorption, especially in the cross cards. Uh, it's like what hurting them. And even like what in the May 2023 exam, one station in Dumka was about that in which a position, like what they sh shown a cross cut and asked you that, like what is the canine causing a root resorption and which position is this? So as a cross cut is showing only two teeth, so people are confused at what is the position of the canine and uh, which tooth is mesial one and which is distal one. And is it the mesial side or the lateral incisor or the distal side of the lateral incisor? So anyway, whenever someone shows you cross cuts, there are two parts. It can be a OPT, OPG, right? Or a, um, just give me a second. So it can be OPG this way, right? It can be a axial view. First of all, you must know that what is axial view and what is a coronal view and what is a uh, sextal view. So anyway, they will show you axial view most likely, but it, they can show it on, on the uh, OPG or the sextal view. So basically they are what they are showing in the exam or the examiner used to show the exam this part, the bottom part on your lower left side, and they will show you one single image. So basically in cross cut, we have to see the relation of this part, like what this is 105, this is 103, and we have to see the relationship of this part that where it's originating from the cross cut. So this is like what the origination, right? So if someone shows me a single image, like what? This one, and I take the example of the uh, last image on the right side, suppose. So I'm taking the example, I'm going to like what circle it, like what the last image, this one. So the examiner will say to me that what cusp is there? and which tooth is on the distal side and which is on the mesial side. Uh, like what which tooth is on the buccal side and which is on the lingual side. So first of all, I have to identify the cross cut number, right? So the cross cut number is on the top, it is 109.4, right? Then I have to go back on my axial view or the OPG from where the cross cut was taken, right? And then I have to see that where is 109.4. So if I come here, and if I see on the bottom, 
this is my 109. So my 109.4 would be somewhere here. And it's the relationship of the canine and the central incisor, right? And if I go to the cross cut on the axle view, so this is basically the cross cut. And this is 109.4. And as we see that there is a canine, and I will like to scroll the position because in there they will make a clear image. So they might be showing you something. So there's a canine relation with the central incisor. And so this is 109.4, the canine with the central incisor on the left side. So people cannot identify is, is it the left side or is the right side. Also the 109.4 is the like a distal half of the uh, central incisor, not the mesial half, right? So this is another important question they used to ask in the exams. So I hope it would be useful.